Good morning. Today is Monday. It is the 18th day of Kislev. And today is a very exciting day. We finished the Tanya. We conclude the Tanya today. And uh, tomorrow we're going to start again the Tanya. Of course, tonight, Yutis Kislev is the Rosh Hashanah for Hasidus, the day the Alter Rebbe came out of prison and which allowed the spreading of the teachings of the Hasidus. And it is considered a big, big holiday. We are doing a Fabrengen tonight. Everyone is invited, 8 o'clock in the Chabad house. Come join us. And uh, let's begin with Tzedakah. Today, let's talk Hashem Karebes Asageula. So, today we're learning the last essay of the Tanya. This essay, the Alter Rebbe talks about three things. First is about what continued what we learned yesterday about the importance of prayer. Yesterday we spoke about it in length. And the Alter Rebbe continues how it is important that the people should pray together. And when you come to in the synagogue, the minion, the happening with the 10 people together, and the second, the Alter Rebbe talks about the, the finishing the entire Talmud together. It should be divided among the people and to finish it together. And finally, the Alter Rebbe talks about the learning the laws of Shabbat and understanding a little deeper of what it means to keep Shabbat not only in an external way, but also internally. So let's begin. The last essay of the Tanya, Echeyach Teichiach. Says the Alter Rebbe, Echeyach Teichiach es amisecha afilu meyepamim, it is written, you shall surely reprove your comrade, even 100 times. That when it comes to when it comes to reproving another Jew, obviously the way to do it in a way that is acceptable, a person should do it with out of deep love. And Al Rebbe here talks about this idea, the concept of the prayer, knowing that Al Rebbe knows and feels how deeply, how important it is. So the Alter Rebbe really cries out from the depth of his heart to encourage us to do it the right way, to pray the right way. Therefore, the Alter Rebbe writes, I cannot contain myself and cannot refrain from crying out yet again in a voice betraying pained weakness. I plead with you out of deep compassion. Obviously, if you would understand the way that the Rebbe understands the meaning of prayer, you wouldn't need to write to us this letter. But El Rebbe understands that, the depth of it, and he's telling us that we should really have pity on our souls, and do it the right way, because then if we know what's good for us. Have pity on your soul. Take care, be extremely vigilant concerning the study of Teira and serving of the heart, which is prayer with proper intent. And the way to do it, says the Alter Rebbe, to pray together. All should begin the prayer in, un- in unison as one, word for word, not one person here and another elsewhere, one mute and the other idly chatting, may God protect us. I was talking about the praying together. Some, when it comes to, we know the, the power of praying together. 
And it says when you pray together with 10 people, the prayer is more is answered. So what does it mean to pray together? Some opinions say that when it comes to Amida, we have to pray together by the Amida. Some others say that you have to begin from the beginning, from the Hoidu. You have to begin, the 10 people to, should pray together. Here, it seems like the Alter Rebbe follows this opinion. We should really begin everything. And certainly not, you come to synagogue, one is davening, one is talking. That's certainly not a, not a good thing. The main cause and instigator of this damage comes from those leading the service, the services. The chazan, the one who leads the service, has to be one who is able to do it the right way and get people around him to do it, to pray together and not to fast. It says, the Alter Rebbe says that unfortunately it's not so. That office is abandoned to whoever wishes to stride forth and snatch the honor to lead the services. Or because not even one desires it. Some people don't, don't want it, so the so and it ends up being that the people who are, who are qualified, the people who are who should be leading the prayer, they just uh, shy away. For this reason, this is the council offered, and a regulation established as, as law, not to be violated further, God forbid, and what is the law that the Rebbe wants to establish? He says, That is, choose fixed individuals fit for this office of leading the, the prayers, do it either by lot or by, or by consent of the majority of the worshippers. And who indeed is fit for this office, says the Alter Rebbe, the Hainu Shem Ispalalim Milo Bemilo Baderech Hamitzua Bekoil Ham. This should be men who pray word for word at a moderate pace, aloud. Neither overly prolonging the prayers nor racing intemperately, God forbid. Not too fast and not too slow. People who are doing it moderately, aloud, they should lead the, the prayers. And Al Rebbe says that they shouldn't shy away. Theirs, theirs is the duty to lead the prayers, each on his day, or as determined. And he shall assemble close around him all those who pray audibly, at least, neither uh, whispering nor rushing, God forbid. So you should have established the people around him who, who pray together with him in a nice pace and in, in speak uh, and and. Uh, and uh, verbalizing the words aloud. And this is amplified in the age old communal regulations in, in many towns. I come now, said the Alter Rebbe, to renew them, to strengthen and invigorate them, never again to be weakened, God forbid. And Alter Rebbe adds in Yiddish an expression that is uh, very rarely says, Xaviad says, Gewald, Gewald. I don't know what's the translation of Gewald, Gewald, Gewald. It's like kind of a big outcry. He says, How long will this be an obstacle for us? We see, we see, we can, you can feel the Alter Rebbe's passion in this thing. So obviously it makes us so uh, uh, all the more to appreciate how important it is to 
is to follow these instructions. It says, Have we not su- uh, sufficient reproof and troubles that have over, uh, overtaken us? Hashem Yishmerenu, may God protect and console us. May God protect and console us with redoubled support and purify our hearts to serve Him in truth. And strengthen and fortify your hearts, all who hope in God. That's so that's the first point of this letter. Then the Alter Rebbe continues with the importance of concluding the learning of the Talmud together. Also complete the study of the entire Talmud year after year. And every community apportioned the tractates by lot or by consent. That each person should take one tractate. In a city that it, with uh, numerous synagogues, each congregation should complete the Talmud, and if a congregation is too small to, to implement this program, they should join forces with men of a large one, of a larger one. This statute, that the entire Talmud be studied every year, shall not be varied or violated. And uh, so, so when people join together in learning the Talmud, actually it's considered like each one of them completes the Talmud. The Rebbe once explained that this is similar to the law of Shabbat. <coughs> Shabbat, the certain prohibitions that you're not allowed to do on Shabbat. So if you have, uh, the law says that if a person violates, obviously he's, is liable for bringing an offering in the time of the temple and so on. So who is ob- obligated to bring the offering if he does it by himself? But if two people do together a work, uh, they work together, they do something, a prohibited thing on Shabbat together, they're not liable for the for the offering. It's not allowed to do it, but, it, but they're not liable. Unless if one person cannot do it by on his own, and it takes two people to do it, then it's considered that each one of them makes it, does the, the work. So, so the, if this is true in the laws of Shabbat, that when two people do something that one person cannot do on his own, it's considered that each one of them does every, the entire thing. The same thing is here. When it comes to the study of the Talmud, the study of the Talmud, you know, we have the program of Dafa Yomi, learn a page a day. It takes seven years to finish the Talmud. So to finish it every year, that each person should finish every year is almost impossible for most people. It's impossible. So therefore, when people join together and they learn together, it's considered like each and every one of them is finishing the entire Talmud. And then continues that the Rebbe v'chol echad v'echad ma'loim dimanal yigmer le'atzma v'chol shavua temanya apie apie shevatehilim kofitas. In addition, each of the participants should individually read the whole of the eightfold Psalm 119 every week. This is the, la- the, the, the longest chapter in the Psalm. It's chapter 119, and that has <coughs> the the this is all the 22 letters of the alphabet. Each letter, each verse begins, there is eight verses for each letter of the alphabet. First eight verses begin with Aleph, second eight verses begins with Bet, and so on. So the Alter Rebbe says, when you study the, the Talmud, you should also, once a week, you should finish this chapter. What is the connection? The Friedrich Rebbe says, first of all, that when you study the Torah, sometimes you focus on the intellect part, intellectual part of the Torah. You have to realize that there is also the godliness, the, sp- the spiritual part of the Torah. And, and you have to say Tehillim te- along with the, the Psalms, and especially the Psalms of 119 that talks about 
the praise of the Torah, the holiness of the Torah. So that is important to do along with the study of the Tehillim, uh, along with the study of the, the Talmud. So the next, the, finally, the Alter Rebbe talks about the importance of keeping the Shabbat in the right way. And Alter Rebbe says that this is also a... Uh, a, a way of fixing things that we cannot fix because we don't have the temple, we cannot bring offering to the temple for our sins. And, of course, in our generation, we learned early in the Tanya about the people would fast to replace the concept of, of, of um, bringing an offering. They would fast a lot, but again, our in, in our day and age, we cannot fast so much without uh, affecting our health. And so the Alter Rebbe spoke about tzedakah. And here the Alter Rebbe gives another advice also to keep Shabbos properly also is considered a way to correct our sins and to forgive for our sins. That's what the Alter Rebbe says now. Moreover, since due to the frailty the frail, frailty of our times. Not everyone is capable of fasting as he ought to fast in order to bring forgiveness. The council of the, um, follows the declaration of our sages of blessed memory. Whoever observes Shabbat according to its law is forgiven all his sins. And Alter Rebbe points out that it's not just keeping Shabbat, it's keeping Shabbat according to the law. In term, the term according to its law is used, is used, is used advisedly. For the Shabbat cannot be properly observed without the knowledge of its laws. It takes a lot to, lo to know the details of Shabbat. We have here every Tuesday, we, we get together, we learn the laws of Shabbat. It is therefore incumbent upon every individual to master the great law of Shabbat. Vegam, in addition to master the laws of Shabbat, he says, Vegam is Zoya Meoich Lesuach Shum Sicha Betela Has Veshalom. Also, you must be careful on Shabbat not to indulge in idle chatter, God forbid. So, what does it mean not to indulge in idle chatter? It's not something which is uh, 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 in the law that one is not allowed to talk idle chatter, but it's an additional thing. You know, the, and the Torah says, in the Ten Commandments, it says that there should be Shabbat Lashem Elokecha, Shabbat to God, your God. And that, so the Gemara says, what it means is that you have to rest just like God rests. So when God rested on Shabbat, you know, God created the world. It's a form of action, but he created it with the speech. When Hashem said, and Shabbat, Hashem rested from the speech. So but by us uh, emulating God also means that we should also be careful with our speech as well. And al Rebbe continues and says, at every mitzvah that we do, there is the external part of the mitzvah and there is the internal part of the mitzvah. And the same thing is also with the mitzvah of Shabbat. It says, Whereas it is known to the students of Kabbalah, all mitzvahs comprise the internal and the external aspect. The spirituality of the mitzvah and the physical act which it requires. Shabbos the externality of the mitzvah of Shabbat is the cessation of physical activity, just as God ceased making the physical heaven and earth. And what is the internal aspect of Shabbos? What is the internal dimension? 
ופנימיוס השבס היא הכוונה בתפילס השבס ובתלמוד תירא לדווקא בשם אחד. The internal dimension of Shabbos is one, one's intention in the Shabbos prayer and during one's Torah study to cleave to the one God. The kavana, the intention. As it is written, it is a Shabbos to the Lord your God, meaning that we need to emulate Hashem, to be connected to Hashem. So you have this, is the keeping in Shabbos in speech and in action. As a matter of fact, the Gemara tells a story also of a chassid that kept the Shabbos not only in, in, in speech, in action and in speech, but also in thought. The Gemara says he went out, he took a walk on Shabbos, and he saw in his field there was a, there was a bridge in, 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 the, in the fence, and he thought on Shabbos to go to fix it. And then he realized why am I thinking of this thing on Shabbos? The Shabbos is a holy day. And he decided, because he thought to fix it on Shabbos, he decided not to fix it at all, never to fix this bridge in the, in the fence. And then the Gemara finishes that it was a miracle that a special tree grew, grew there, something that gave, that gave him uh, sustenance for him and his family. And the point is that, obviously, it doesn't say anything anywhere in the Torah that you when you that you cannot think about things at Shabbos. But when a person is connected to Hashem, your, your, your connection with the, if the, the connection is such a deep connection, you're able to feel and think godly also. Just like in, in marriage, you can do act, do things for for the, for your spouse. But when you're connected so much, you, you can feel, you can end, end your spouse's sentence and you can know, you, you know you, the connection is so deep that even the thoughts are connected. So here also in Shabbos, that we're connected to Hashem in that way. This internal level of the mitzvah of Shabbos is the element of remembering. We know in Shabbos that he says, in the Ten Commandments, once it says, Zachor at Yom HaShabbat, remember the holy day of Shabbos, to all make it holy. And then it says, Shamor at Yom HaShabbat, guard, um, observe the holy day of Shabbos. So, Zachor, how do you remember? Is, is by making Kiddush, and so on. So the Shabbos comprises two elements, remembering Zachor and observing Shamor. Reflecting the two commandments, remember the, the Shabbos day to sanctify it and observe the Shabbos day to sanctify it. Elevating the soul on Shabbos through proper intent, kavana, during the prayer and Torah study is an act of remembering. The inner dimension of the element of observing is refraining from speech about material affairs, just as God ceased from the ten utterances through which the physical heaven and earth were created. The external aspect of observing is refraining from active labor, and the internal aspect of observing is refraining and resting from speech about material affairs. And now the Rebbe continue, uh, concludes here, the Tanya, for one opposite the other, chulu means etc. So speaking about material affairs and Shabbos is the inverse of the, uh, of the rest and elevation that a Jew secures in Shabbos through prayer and Torah study. But a deeper understanding also here is that Hashem created us to be able to emulate, to be connected to Hashem. And that's what the whole Tanya is about, the way that we are connecting to Hashem. And the Rebbe points out that this, the Tanya is finished with Chulu, etc. What this is saying that, yes, we finished the Tanya and we learned so much. And we think we already acquired everything and we know everything. And Al-Tarab is telling us at the end, 
Hulu. There is more, etc. That means learn it again, start it again, and learn it over and over and over again because the, the depth to the Tanya is no end. And uh, so Mazel Tov for concluding the Tanya. Tonight, join us 8 o'clock and Bezrat Hashem. We shall start once again tomorrow and tonight, of course, by the CM, as soon as you conclude, you have to restart it again. And uh, the learning of the Tanya, the Hasidus, is like the Baal Shem Tov said, that this is what will bring Mashiach, let us hope it happens very soon. Amen. All the best of a wonderful day.